Ah, okay. Sorry for the interruption. I may have to stitch these two together. Um, or I'll just post them as two separate videos. Anyway, uh, somebody walked by outside. Their dogs weren't on a leash, and so there was not There was a contest of barking. All right, um, what were we saying? Oh, uh, so this is the scientific intensity and the fact that it gets quieter as you move away. I, I am deaf because I used to like to buy concert tickets right up front next to the speakers, and um, I didn't wear earplugs, and I shouldn't have done that. And, of course, the speakers have to be very loud up front so that people towards the back uh, can hear. But there's another thing that I wanted to bring up, and that is... The uh, perceived loudness, the, um, I'm going to try to do that, perceived loudness. And this is, um, has not, it has, has everything to do with how intense the sound is, but also your ears are not completely uh, linear in their response. In other words, they respond to louder sounds not quite as well as they do to quieter sounds. Your ears are an amazing, amazing organ in your body. The perceived loudness is measured in decibels. And you may have heard this before, decibels. So I thought I would give you a, a little bit on decibels here. Um, uh, decibels, uh, which deci is means a tenth. So really the unit of sound perceived loudness is a bell, but we tend to measure it in decibels. It's kind of annoying. But the number of decibels, and that's abbreviated with a small d followed by a big B, is 10 times the log of the intensity of the sound divided by 10 to the minus 12. Now 10 to the minus 12 is actually the quietest sound intensity we can hear. I know this looks funny, but the quietest intensity that we can hear is 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. So basically what we're saying is whatever sound is above your um, your threshold of hearing, 10 to the minus 12, however high that is above that, take the log of that. That is just the power part of it. Multiply that by 10, you got the decibels. And um, so zero dB would correspond to the quietest sound that we could hear. And it turns out that um, uh, there's some other things like uh, uh, 50 dB is a is kind of a, um, a moderate conversation. Like if you were just talking quietly to the person next to you, um, uh, 75 dB is you know kind of like a, a loud room. Um, when you get up to say 100 dB, we're talking power tools here. Um, not, not a jackhammer, but something close, you know, like a circular saw or something that makes a lot of noise where you'd want to wear hearing protection. Um, 120 dB um, is the threshold of pain. That's where, give or take, uh, that where uh, the, the experience of hearing kind of turns into pain, where you want to involuntarily uh, put your hands over your ears and stop it. Um, if you stood on a, next to a runway, and listen to a jet take off. Uh, that would be here. Um, in my high school physics textbook, and this is hilarious, uh, there was an entry right about here, and it said 110 dB uh, rock music. And I think they meant rock music concert, but I always laugh because I thought, oh, we, we must listen to music at just under the threshold of pain, which in high school I had a tendency to do, turn up the sound really loud. Um, so these dB levels, they're not even, they're not, so 50, 50 dB, and if you were to say 100 dB is twice as loud, no, it's not. Uh, it's actually the power of 10. So to go from 50 dB to 100 dB, well, first of all, there's a 10 here. So knock one of these zeros off. You're going from 5 to 10. In power, 5 to 10 in power, 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 10, it's an increase of, of 100,000 times more energy in the sound. But to our ears, it, it doesn't really sound 100,000 times louder. It just sounds a bunch louder. Um, the smallest difference we can generally hear is about 3 dB. And on a properly calibrated stereo, if you have one of these uh, volume controls that has the little clicks, the little clicks are supposed to be um, 3 dB apart. Um, now there's some argument about this, but uh, 6 dB is a doubling of power in um, in uh, sound reinforcement. That's a 3 dB increase in um, voltage and a 3 dB increase in current. It gives you a 6 dB increase in power, and, um, and that sounds twice as uh, loud, they say. Um, not twice as loud, sorry, twice as much power. So anyway, um, uh, let's do this. Let's do the final thing for today. And I hope I can stitch these two videos together. This is uh, 
I should have hit the pause button, not the off button. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is uh, human hearing. So we can make a graph of human hearing. And on this uh, axis, we'll talk about the loudness. And uh, we're going to go from 0 dB all the way up to 120 dB. On this axis, we're going to talk about the frequency. Uh, loudness is in dB. Frequency is in hertz. And this is not going to be an even thing because this down here is going to be 20 hertz. Um, this right here is going to be... What am I doing? So this here is going to be 200 hertz. This is going to be 2,000 hertz. And this is going to be 20,000 hertz. So this is kind of a log scale. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. They're, they're not the most fun thing to do. But the low end of human hearing, uh, the lowest frequency we can hear is between 20 and 30 hertz. Um, that means anything lower than 20 hertz, you don't really hear it as a sound. It doesn't mean it isn't there, and it doesn't mean you can't feel it with your body. Um, but it is not making a sound that your ears can process. So anything under 20 or 30 hertz is produced by a subwoofer. And I know we've stolen that term. Subwoofer now it just means a, a speaker that makes bass frequencies like that boom, boom, boom you hear in certain cars. But it's not how it was originally designed. Originally, subwoofers were designed to reproduce frequencies below human hearing that you could perceive, you could feel. Um, I first experienced it in the movie Jurassic Park in that scene where the T-Rex was coming. Um, they played noise in the subwoofer that you couldn't quite hear but you could feel. Uh, before, they showed that, uh, that cup of water with the... The, the ripples, and they started making the noise in the low-frequency end. Uh, by the way, the speakers that make low-frequency sounds would be called woofers. Very British, isn't it? The woofer, so a subwoofer makes frequencies lower than that. Um, human, uh, okay, uh, human voice uh, is usually peaked somewhere around 1,000. So somewhere in here is where the bulk of the human voice is. Of course, we know people have higher voices and lower voices. Um, and up here, at uh, between 18 and 20, okay, 18,000 to 22,000 hertz is the high end of human hearing. Anything above that, you can't hear. Um, and this number, 18,000 to 22,000, has, has to do with... Uh, your age a lot. As people get older, they lose the higher frequency hearing. And that's the secret behind the mosquito ringtone, which runs about 21,000 hertz. And uh, teenagers can hear it, uh, but old people can't. So for a while there, when cell phones weren't allowed in school, teenagers would have their mosquito ringtone so they could tell that they were getting a call. Uh, what you would do after that point, I don't know. Oh, excuse me, I got to go to the bathroom or something equally lame. Uh, Funny thing is, my hearing is compromised because I have um, tinnitus. I have a ringing in my ears. I have a sound that I hear all the time, even when there's no sound. That means that one of my my cilia, my nerves, has been overstimulated and it's just firing randomly. And that affects my ability to hear intelligibly, but it does not affect my ability to hear. So I can hear the mosquito ringtone if I'm close enough, but I mainly just feel it. I don't really hear it. I, I know the sensation that I feel when there is one going on. Um, a lot of uh, uh, horror movies and stuff will play really high frequencies when they want you to be freaked out. Like, I believe The Ring did that a couple times. The Ring is the one with the videotape that if you watch it, the, anyway. Yeah, um, so, so here's the deal. Uh, human hearing is an envelope. And low-end sounds at 120 hertz. Um, and so do middle-range sounds hurt a little earlier. And I think high-frequency sounds... And then this comes in and does one of these. So this is human hearing. I'm going to draw a picture of your ear. Uh, that's not a very good ear. Let's draw another ear. There we go. Notice that I, for the shape inside the ear, I put uh, little lambdas. That's a, in, an homage to uh, um, an homage to uh, um, <laughs> the wavelength of sound. So what happens is we actually have a little dip right in here where you can hear a little better in the middle range of the frequency. So um, 
uh, that, that, that can help you if you're trying to listen for a voice of somebody uh, amongst other sounds in the wilderness, the high frequencies. You can hear a quieter voice amongst all the other stuff. Uh, the pain threshold, I'm not sure I've drawn this correct. You have a copy of this in your book, but I'm just trying to say there's an envelope in here between of loudness and of um, of uh, uh, frequency. And then that is the range in which human hearing goes on. A uh, couple things I want to point out to you. Um, uh, the army has a, a weapon that uses sound that creates a 150 to 180 decibel selective um, beam of sound. And it is designed uh, for un, um, you know, people not wearing headphones or earplugs uh, that, that when that sound hits them, they'll stop doing what they're doing. So it is a non-lethal uh, kind of riot control measure. Um, and even with headphones, 180 dB would be hard to uh, hard to uh, filter out. Most uh, most earplugs, uh, the best ones that I've ever purchased, uh, they usually they usually reduce about 20 dB. The best ones I ever purchased took 33 dB off of the sound, and uh, only for a narrow frequency range. But uh, so even if you took 30 off of this, if they put it to the 180 setting, you're still dealing with something where you just can't handle the, the intensity of that. If you want to hear and, and, and watch some videos about a guy who does really interesting stuff, uh, Woody Norris is his name. I'm pretty sure Woody is not the name he was given uh, at birth, but Woody Norris is an inventor that works with sound a lot. He does um, he does hypersound and he does some other things. We'll talk about that, but you can find some TED Talks or something with Woody Norris, and he's got some interesting inventions. Um, that was that. Let's see. What was else I going to say? Low frequency, high frequency, um, loudness. There's one more little story um, having to do with uh, resonance and uh, the fact that uh, babies – Babies will adjust their crying frequency in this range right in here, somewhere around 1,000 hertz. And they will adjust the frequency until they find the frequency that gets their mother to come and feed them the fastest. Um, uh, and, and that is a learned behavior. I read about this. And, uh, and it has to do with the fact that, you know, you want your mom to come even if she can barely hear you. So uh, they will range through these frequencies, trying different cries until they find one that works really well. Um, that's about it for today. I'm going to try to stitch these two videos together and make one lecture out of it. So wish me luck.